Lightroom Classic has gotten really big updates this fall. The biggest one being the Mask AI tool, which has also vastly improved in the latest update. The other one is Content Aware Remove tool. And I will look at those and how those will make your image editing faster and your images better. Hi, it's Peter here and let's get right into the business. And a disclaimer, this video is not sponsored by Adobe. I have been paying for Creative Cloud for many, many years and I use their software all the time because I found that the whole workflow is the best, even though I use some other editing tools also. If you want to learn more about my workflow, you can take a look at this video. And before we get into the Mask AI tool, which I think is the biggest update, let's look at the Content Aware tool first, or the Content Aware Remove tool first. It's right next to the Healing Brush and Clone Brush. But to be honest, I haven't really found this tool to be that good. It's a, it's a good start and makes cloning and, and, um, and removing objects in your images a lot, lot faster. But in some cases, like this boat, for example, if I want to remove it, it doesn't really work that well. I could use it for this traffic sign on the bridge if I wanted to, but uh, I still needed to use some clone tool. So there is a lot to do with this tool in Adobe. They need to improve it a lot so that it is good enough for use. Now, I don't really have any use for it. If you have used it, what kind of uh, images or what kind of... Uh, uh, object have you removed with this and I'm not saying that you should remove object on an image but sometimes it is totally okay and like I've always said that image editing there are no limits in my opinion all the things that matter is how good the image is but of course there are some limitation if you're doing uh, journalism or photo documents and in some parts of nature photography it's a big no-no but in general there are no limits. The only thing that matters is the image that you present. Mask tool improvements. And I think the biggest improvement in mask tool or the AI mask tool is that you can separate different parts of a human being. And this is huge for portrait photographers. Look at this. Everything is separated and you can separately adjust different things. And this is really, really huge and makes portrait editing so much faster. Until now, I have used Luminar, Neo, and AI for this, but now I don't need that anymore, to be honest. I can do it in Lightroom, and it's blazing fast. And there are also new tools for background and objects. And the background mask is, of course, quite obvious. It will mask the background of your image. This was possible with a couple of steps. You select the subject and invert it to mask, copy it and invert it to mask. But it's much faster. You just one click and you have the background separate it from the subject. And then you have the object selection tool, which is just basically you paint over the object and the AI will figure out the edges of the object and then you can adjust the object separate from anything or everything else from the image. And this makes it a lot faster. You don't have to be very precise when you're painting over an object. Before you needed to use a brush tool and you know it was a bit harder when because you needed to be really precise to make that selection. Now AI will do that hard job for you. And what's good about this, it makes it a lot, lot faster. And before I show a few things about the portrait mask, a few things why masks are important. When you take an image, it's an average representation of the scene. What I always do when I edit, I separate the subject background and maybe some object. And it used to be a pretty hard job to manually do everything. Now AI can do me the hard part or the, the boring part and make my editing a lot faster. Because the reason why I want to separate these is that I want the subject to be a bit brighter and then I usually lower the uh, exposure in the background. In most cases it's needed because I can't control the natural light and I can't not always be at the right spot at the right time. Especially when traveling, you, you might not be in the best time of the day photographing that particular thing. And that applies to street photography too. Of course, do not overdo it. Sometimes it might be a good thing to lower the background a lot and sometimes not, but it, it all depends on the image and of course on your style. But the basic idea is to separate different elements and different parts of the image and then treat them separately, which is called so-called local adjustment. And I think that's the biggest thing that you can make your images better is to use local adjustments. Do you use masks when you 
edit your images and do you separate the background from the subject and all that or what is your method of making the image look better or the image look like it was when you photograph it because also image editing is big part of it is that you want to make the scene look like it was or like you felt it and when you're using ETTR you need to do some image editing because the image that you get will be a bit too bright at least how I think and it might lack a bit of contrast too so you need to do that too but what is your method on this and masks for portraits Lightroom Classic can identify persons in the image. When you open an image, it will start to look for persons and people in the image. When, when it finds people in the image, it, they will appear here. And then you click this and then you can choose how you want to make the masks. I would make separate masks for every different part that uh, Classic AI can do or the <laughs> mask AI in, in Lightroom Classic can do. Then you have the possibility to separately adjust different parts of a person. You can adjust the hair, the skin in the face, eyes, eyebrows, lips and rest of the body. And I think that is really, really crucial because then you can make slight softening in the skin and make the eyebrows darker and that. And also here, it depends on how much you want to do that. It depends on your style. So don't overdo it. Don't make the skin look too plasticky or anything like that. The slight problem with the masks is the naming. As you can see, automatically names the mask one, mask two, which is not very intuitive. You don't know which one is which. You need to open it to see it. And if you want to rename, you have to rename every one of them, which is not very convenient and very fast. And here are the presets that I will provide for you come in handy. I have my presets that will name the different parts automatically. So we click here and voila, you have all the masks named and then you can start editing. This makes your editing so much faster. You don't have to rename every layer or every mask separately. You just click here and you're good to go. This preset I will provide you for free and I've had some other free presets like landscape one which will separate the background from the subject which can be used of course in any other genre too where you have a, a certain a clear subject and a background these basic uh, presets don't do any editing on the images they just make the masks and name them accordingly and that will make your editing a lot faster I've also included some presets that you need to pay for and those make slight adjustments to the image. Just small adjustments that will make a, a good starting point for your edits where you can start tweaking those. But there will be a link in the description and explanation about how to get them and where to get them. But don't forget there are a few free ones too so you don't have to pay anything for those. And I've also included a bonus uh, preset that you can apply when you uh, import your images. If you use ETTR this will lower the exposure and add some contrast automatically to your images so you have a better starting point to start the edit. It's such a slight, you can, of course you can tweak them later if you want, but it's a good starting point for, for your edits and it makes it a lot easier since you don't have to do the basic global adjustments for every image. You can just import it with the preset and you're good to go. As I say, these presets are only the starting point. You work from the starting point towards the way you want to edit the image and make the image look like your image is. I'm really glad that Adobe has really taken seriously the AI mask tool type things because they've been lacking a bit behind, but now they are back in the game with this. And what I like about this, that it is so much faster to edit and it makes me, it makes it so much easier for me to separate different things in the image with the help of the AI. What are your feelings about this? And do you ever use AI in your image editing? And here is the video about my workflow. And the other one, other link is to the instruction how to get the free presets and how to buy the presets if you want to do that. But hey, thanks for watching and bye for now.